Hey class, so today and this week really we've been working on word problems where words we're familiar with don't necessarily mean the same thing. So for example, more is a word we usually associate with things like addition. <laughs> and in the word problems we've been working with this week, what it really wants you to do is compare numbers, meaning show which one is bigger and by how much, or show which one is smaller by how much. And that really relates to the measurement we've been doing because we often compare length. We like to know if something is longer or shorter than something else. So let's go into our video lesson. Our objective for today is I can solve word problems by correctly identifying the operation I need to use, information I need to know, and using number bonds or quick tens and ones to solve the problem. I'm going to add here and say that something else we're going to use will be our bar model because that's something we've started looking at a lot lately and that can come in really handy when I'm just trying to draw the picture of the um, of the problem to figure out what I need to do. So let's try. Okay, so here is our first problem. Blaine has 75 apples. Lucy has 20 apples more than Blaine. How many apples does Lucy have? So this story tells me a lot of information. I'm going to use a bar model to draw out that information. So I already know exactly how much how many apples Blaine has. Blaine whoop, has 75 apples. So this whole, whole box is 75. This whole entire box here. These are Blaine's apples with a B. So now I'm trying to find out how many apples Lucy has. So I'm going to go back into the, my story problem where it talks about Lucy because in my in my question it says how many apples does Lucy have so my unknown must be Lucy's total so I'm gonna come back up here Lucy has 20 apples more than Blaine well I know how many Blaine has Blaine has 75 so I'm going to draw Lucy's box if Lucy has more her box will be bigger than Blaine's. It's going to be longer. They start at the same spot, but I know that it's going to be longer. Well, now I can very clearly see that Blaine's box fits inside Lucy's box. So this amount is 75. That amount is the same. Well, now I'm going to go back into my story problem to see if I can see what this chunk is. Because I know that Lucy has more but I want to know how much more. So Blaine has 75 apples. Lucy has 20 apples more. I'm going to stop there. 20 apples more. So if she has 20 apples more, well, I have just been told that this is 20. Let's fix that too. This is 20. Well, I have both of my parts, which means I must be missing my whole number. Well, I know how to add and solve for that. I can use one of my strategies I learned in previous videos. I'm going to do it two ways because I know that I should always prove my answer. The first will be quick tens and ones. I know that this problem does want me to do addition. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quick tens. And one, two, three, four, five quick ones, which is 75. That's how many Blaine has. That's also the same number as the start of Lucy's number. Now, all I also need to know is that I'm going to need 20 more. So I'm going to go ahead and use a different color and add one, two quick tens. Now, all I have to do is count up my quick tens and ones. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and my ones hasn't changed. So 95 would be my answer with quick tens and ones, 95. Now I'm going to try it another way because I know another way and I want to check my answer. So I'm going to do it with my equation. I'm going to write my number sen sentence 75 plus 20, which I got from my bar model. And I am going to break my 75 into 70 and 5. 
This is the number of tens there are and the number of ones there are in the number 75. Now I can very, very quickly see that I can add 70 and 20 together because that's just my tens. So I can add seven tens plus two tens, which I know is nine tens or 90. Well, using my leftover ones, I know that 90 plus five is also 95. Here what's important is that my answers match. I got 95 using the tens method, and I got 95 using my equation. Now I'm not quite done. I need to give an answer. So my answer is that Lucy has Lucy has 95 apples. Lucy has 95 apples. And I'm just going to put that right there. So Lucy's total number of apples is 95. And down here, I have all of the work I used to prove it. So now let's try one together. Pause the video while you go and get a pen and or a pencil and paper and start the video again when you're ready to continue. Okay, second graders, so for these problems, you are going to need to go get a piece of paper and a pencil of your own. I'm going to solve the problem over here in green, and I would like for you to solve the problem over here in brown. So, pause the video while you go get a pencil and paper. Start the video again when you're ready to continue. Great. So, first thing I need to do is read my story problem. So, I'm going to read my story problem, which says, Adrian has 62 pickles. Jorge has 38 pickles. How many more pickles does Adrian have? Okay, I get a lot of information just from reading my story problem out loud. So please read your story problem out loud with me. Sarah has 75 oranges. Renaya has 45 oranges. How many more oranges does Sarah have? Okay, great. Let's come back to my story problem. I know that Adrian has 62 pickles. He already has it. So I am going to make a bar model of Adrian's picture, pickles. So Adrian has 62 pickles. This square, this rectangle that I've drawn here, represents Adrian and his 62 pickles. On your problem, let's read the first sentence again together. Sarah has 75 oranges. Can you turn that into a bar model? Pause the video while you make the first part of your bar model as I did for Adrian. Start the video again when you're ready to continue. Okay, on your paper, you should have made an S for Sarah because Sarah has 75 oranges. Sarah has 75 oranges, so I'm going to draw this for Sarah. Now remember, this image represents Sarah, the first sentence, Sarah, and her 75 oranges. Oranges are my unit. Don't forget those in your answer. Now back to my problem. I'm going to look at my next sentence. It says, Jorge has 38 pickles. Well, once again, Jorge already has his pickles. So I am going to see if I can draw this now. So I'm going to need a J for Jorge. Now, I can look at my problem and I know that 38 is a smaller number than 62. 38 is a smaller number than 62. So when I draw my square for Jorge, I'm going to make the square smaller. So Jorge's square is going to start right in the same line as Adrian's square. It's going to come out and not go as far as Adrian's square. It's only 38 pickles. Okay, come over to your problem now. Sarah has 75 oranges. We've already represented Sarah and her 75 oranges. So let's read the second part of the problem. Renaya has 45 oranges. 
Okay, you have another character that already has a specific amount of oranges. Stop the video while you make the second part of your bar model for Renaya. Start the video again when you are ready to continue. Great, so if you're looking at your problem, 45 is a smaller number than 75. So when you made your bar for Renaya, starting at the same um, edge as Sarah's, you should not have come as far in your box because 45 is smaller. Just looking at these pictures, I can tell that my question is probably going to ask me to compare the size of these boxes. If your picture does not look like this, pause the video now to correct it so you can move forward successfully. Start the video again when you're ready to continue. Okay, back to my problem. I'm on my third sentence. How many more pickles does Adrian have? Now, here's this word, more. My immediate instinct is to add, but I need to really read that question carefully. How many more pickles does Adrian have? Okay, well, I can see down here that Adrian does have more pickles than Jorge. Since I know how many each of them has, I can tell what this space right here should equal. So I'm going to put a question mark there. So the question is asking me, what is this little empty space? How many more pickles would Jorge need to have to have the same number as Adrian? That is the question my um, my word problem is asking me. Let's come over to your word problem. Your third sentence says, how many more oranges does Sarah have? Ooh, I see in your problem, here is the word more. Ask yourself, is this word more asking me to add these together, as in how many do they have all together? Or Sarah got 45 more oranges, and how many does she have now? Is that what this question is asking me? Or is this question asking me the difference between Sarah and Renaya's number? On your uh, paper, please indicate where you are going to be solving for the unknown, understanding if more is asking me to add together or if more is asking me to compare. Start the video again when you're ready to continue. Your question is also asking you to compare. You are looking for this area. If you made any other marks on your paper, go ahead and stop the video and correct this. Our word more in this word problem is asking me to compare and see how many does Sarah have that Renaya does not have. Okay, so come back over to my video or my um, problem. Now begins the process of solving. I can do it two ways. I can either do a quick 10 and quick ones, or I can do my equation. I'm going to start with my quick 10s and ones. So I can see at the very beginning that eight ones is more than two ones. So whatever I do, I'm going to need to be very careful about those two numbers because I know that in second grade, I'm not going to be doing a um, two minus eight. Now you may be saying, Ms. Combs, how do you know you're subtracting? Here's how I know I'm subtracting. 62 is my biggest number. And since down here I have one two parts, I can look at this as if it is a fact family. I'm going to draw a quick fact family around it. I can look at it as 62, 38, and my question mark, which would be just like a number bond. And so that is how I know I'm going to do subtraction, because I know that when I have my whole number and what I'm missing is a part, I can do my whole number minus my part and find to find my other part. So over on your word problem, ask yourself, are you going to be using addition to find this answer or will you be using subtraction too? Now, 
Back to my problem. I'm going to draw my, my um, tens and ones. Since I can see that right in my 62, I'm not going to have enough to take eight from, one of my tens is going to be a gr in groups of five. So I'm going to draw six, one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to do some just dots. One, oh, didn't want to do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now I should have six tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and I still need two more. 61, 62. All right. So on your paper, please create your total, your 75. Start the video again when you have drawn your quick tens for 75. All right, so your paper should now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quick tens, and one, two, three, four, five. Since your number down here in 45 is not bigger than up here in 75, you will not need to make a group of 10 like I did. I'm just showing you another available option. So remember that if I were trying to do all of my quick 10s like this, it would take me too much time and there would be a chance I would miss one. We only want to do it to one group. So now I can begin my process of subtracting. I'm going to subtract using red. I know that I'm subtracting 38, which means I need to take away three tens. So I'm going to take away one, two, three tens. Now I'm left with two tens. Over to my ones, I know I'm going to take away eight ones. Well, that is a group of five, one, two, three, four, five, and a group of three. I see two, three, which leaves me with this square here. So now if I add my two squares together, I have 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So I have 24 remaining. So my answer right now is 24 pickles. 24 pickles. On your side, in your paper, please subtract 45 from your 10 quick 10s and 1s. Start the video again when you have your numeric answer. Okay, on your paper, you should have crossed out all five of the ones because five minus five is zero. And then you should have crossed out one, two, three, four of the tens. Boxing your remaining tens, you would have 10, 20, 30 left over with not, no, no ones. So on your side, you should have put 30 and boxed it. If you have missed any of these steps, please stop the video and try it again. Now, I can do it another way just to prove my answer. If I really think that I'm right, I should be able to do it another way. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this using my expression or number sentence. So I'm going to write out 62 minus 38. I know that we've been practicing some subtraction strategies. If you need review on any of those, the video is still available. Please use it. Now, I would like you on your paper to write out your subtraction sentence. Start the video again when you're ready to continue. All right. You should have written out 75 minus 45 on your paper. Now, for my problem, I know that once again, this 2 minus 8 is not going to work. So I'm going to take 10 out. So I have 10 out, and I'm going to take the rest, which is 52, over here. Now, what's different is I have three tens in 38. So I'm actually going to split this up, too, so that I have 30 and 8. Now, I can do 10 minus 8 and 52 minus 30 and add those numbers together. 10 minus 8 equals 2 and 52 minus 30 equals 20 
2. If I add 22 and 2 together, I end up with 24. So I can write that up here. And what's important to note is that I got 24 both ways I did it, which tells me I did my math correctly. So what I would like you to do is pause the video while you use a strategy we have learned to subtract 75 and 45. So 45 is being subtracted from 75. Start the video again when you're ready to continue. Okay, your paper may have looked something like this, where you know that 5 minus 5 is going to give you 0. So you could split your numbers into 10s and 1s, and then subtract the 5s, which would give you 0, leaving you with 70 minus 40. And when you solve 70 minus 40, you end up with 30. Again, 70 minus, 75 minus 45 is equaling 30. Now, your numbers matched. If your board did not look like this or you used a different strategy that did not get you to 30, go back and check your work. If you're still getting the same incorrect answer, please come to me with questions on Monday or the next class period. Um, so that I can help you find where you were making a mistake. This is a little different because this is a two-digit number. So now that my numbers both match, I can safely say that in my case, um, Adrian has 24 more pickles than Jorge. And I want to try and put that into a sentence as best I can. So please write the sentence using your two character names, and your unit being oranges on your paper. Start the video again when you're ready to continue. Great! Your sentence might look something like, Sarah has 30 more oranges than Renaya. So, those are two great strategies for solving these problems. If you had any problems with this page, Please go back and watch this section again or write down some questions about things that were not clear so we can talk about them in the next class. If you are ready to move on, you can continue to play the video. Okay, so here is your challenge problem. I'm going to read the problem aloud and then I would like you to pause the video and try solving this problem on your own using a bar model and then um, a 10 quick tens and ones as well as your equation to prove your answer. So let's start by reading the problem together. Diego has 46 more pennies than Robert. Robert has 63 pennies. Leo has 87 pennies. How many pennies does Diego have? One more time. Diego has 46 more pennies than Robert. Robert has 63 pennies. Leo has 87 pennies. How many pennies does Diego have? What I would like you to do is stop the video and solve this problem on your paper. Start the video again when you are ready to continue. All right, so on your paper, you should have started a bar model. But before you did that, you needed to notice something very, very tricky about this particular word problem. And that would be this sentence whoop, right here. Leo has 87 pennies. Well, I noticed that in my first sentence and my second sentence, Leo is not mentioned. Diego has 46 more pennies than Robert. So Robert is who I should be caring about. It doesn't say anything about Leo. So this entire part right here that says Leo has 86, 87 pennies, that was put there to trick you. Do not be tricked by extra information. So if you added anything that had to do with Leo, go ahead and stop the video, erase, and try solving your problem again, now knowing that this whole Leo part was a trap. Pause the video, resolve now that you're looking for Diego and Robert, and start the video again when you're ready to move forward.
All right, now that we got that trap out of the way, let's go into our problem. I know that Robert has 63 pennies, so I can draw my model for his pennies because he has that. That's what he's got. What I don't know is how many pennies Diego has because it just says that he has 46 more pennies than Robert. Well, that's not a specific number. So for his box for Diego, I'm going to start it where Robert's is, and I'm going to make it longer. Longer. Because I know he has more, that special word of ours. So now I can very clearly see that Robert's number of 63 fits inside Diego's. It fits right inside. So I know that right here, this amount is 63. That, that is the same. Now, if I go back into my problem, I know that this additional section is 46. And I know that because it says Diego has 46 more. So whatever, whatever Robert had, Diego has that and then 46 more on top of that. So the question is asking me, what Diego's total number is, which means I can actually use addition to solve this if I labeled it correctly. Now, if you did not make a bar model for this problem, go ahead and stop the video and add the bar model. It's going to help your process in the long run. Start the video again when you're ready to move forward. All right, I know two ways of doing my addition problems. I'm going to make a little way one and way two. So way one is to do my quick tens and ones. So I'm going to start by making my 63. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. And now I'm going to make my 46 more. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember to use quick tens and ones because they are far more accurate. Now, while I may have been counting these as ones, they are actually groups of 10. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40. So even though I was counting them, I was just keeping track of the number of lines or tens that I was drawing. So now, since I know this is addition, I can just go ahead and count these numbers up. So please count with me. I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, and that's it. I should have 109 in my 10. So I'm going to go ahead and write 100. Nine. So if you did not get the number 109, go back to your paper and check your quick tens and ones. I'm betting you either missed one or you added a few and there might be something a little off about your picture. If there's nothing wrong about your picture, then make sure you bring in your paper to show me at our next class so that I can help you with the problem. Now, the other way I can do this is with an equation. Since I am adding the two parts, this one and this one, together. Okay, so I'm going to do my equation, which should be 63 plus 46. Now, I can see that 3 plus 6 will not get me to 10. So if I were to split this into 10s and 1s, and I have 60 and 3, 40 and 6, well, this 3 and this 6 will come together to be 9. But I do see somewhere I'm going to be making 10, and that will be with my 60 and my 40. Remember, 100 is just um, 10 10s. So here I can see that 60 plus 40 equals 100 and 
3 plus 6 equals 9, and those two numbers added together gets me to 109. Now, I'm going to look. I have 109 here and 109 down here, which means my answer must be correct, unless it means that I made a mistake on both sides, which would be very unusual to get the wrong answer twice after doing all of that work. But sometimes it happens, and if it happened to you, please bring me your paper so I can help you with the problem. All right, so now I want to put it into a sentence. This sentence might sound like Diego has 109 pennies. Maybe you wrote a different sentence, but it should have something to do with Diego and how many pennies he had. If you got this right, give yourself a pat on the back. That was your challenge problem, and you are ready to move forward. So, hopefully some of these word problems have helped you understand the strategies um, we've been using in class to solve problems, but maybe they didn't, and maybe you need some additional review. So, at the top of this page, you can see two websites that provide some excellent resources for word problems. They have ones you can solve. Some of them are games. Um, so if you have the availability to play those games or to solve those problems, I definitely encourage you to do that. Um, if not, remember you can always write your own word problems. Just um, try to make them about comparing numbers. So where you're trying to look for how many more or how many less one person has than the other. And that's slightly different than just writing a regular old word problem. Um, you can, of course, always go back into the video and just change the numbers around um, and, then, uh, and then solve them a different way. Now, if these are still challenging for you, I encourage you to go back to the addition or subtraction or first word problems video and watch it again um, because the the best way to get better at math is to practice, practice, practice. Um, so I hope you got something out of this video. Um, we will be continuing to do word problems and as we get new word problems with new tricky parts, um, I'll be posting some more videos. But if this was still a challenge, go back, watch the video, slow down a little bit, and then um, try them again. Try them with different numbers. Try them with something new. Um, and then I will see you again on Monday, and hopefully you are word problem ready. Don't forget to try out those um, fantastic websites up above. They are totally teacher recommended, teacher approved. All right, see you soon. Oh, okay.